Una, 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 me calle cua, a halle cua, no ia no canoe, no ia, ia no ine, hoy o que hiki mai, a hiki mai no oi, a hiki puno me que aloha. Aloha e, aloha e. Welcome to Conversations with Love. Today is September 11th, 2023. We are live from all over the world with guests from my heart to yours. My name is Lee Culver Richards and our first guest is Grandma Chandra. Grandma Chandra is a highly intuitive. She reads auras from the quantum light field. She heals through light codes and frequencies within her holographic fractal videos. She works with sacred geometric forms, high vibrational essential oils. All of her apps and her healing green laser are personally encoded for each client. Grandma Chandra is an indigo iyani who came to Gaia to help with ascension through her products and readings. She is a multidimensional being who communicates with many people around the globe and across the galaxy, sometimes in light language, sometimes as a part of nature. Like the whales and dolphins, she is clairvoyant, clairaudient, and clairsentient. As the whales are the keepers of the Akashic records, Grandma Chandra has full access to these records. She is going to open our sacred space for us and then deliver a message. Thank you, Grandma Chandra. Namaste. Okay, I'm going to bring up her message. Okay. <laughs> Hopefully this works, folks. I'm very untechnological. The falling of the Twin Towers on 9-11 was the opening of the pathway to get rid of all the old, dark, symbology. That was the first visual picture of how events are and will be happening. This is the first time people realized in their higher consciousness that this occurrence is even possible. Even though there were victims of this event, all these souls had previously... <sighs> A group. Is that you or me? Okay, that's Grandma Chandra. She sometimes cries through me. All these souls had previously agreed to serve for this purpose of cleaning up to allow humanity to get out of slavery. That was one of the first times that the old consciousness was shaken. This is when the cracks for the new consciousness opened up in humanity. Humanity started to receive through this crack in consciousness, new information, new guidance, and new energy. It is like old clay in the desert, which breaks into pieces and then forms a new shape. When the rain comes, it goes into the cracks. Out of the cracks in the spring, the new trees and flowers grow. The old consciousness is broken. The cracks were formed. The new life, the new energies 
In the spring, the new trees and flowers grow. The old consciousness is broken. The cracks were formed. The new life and new energies came into the cracks and the new energetic layer started to grow out of that. Now, the trees that have grown from the new energy are so high on the next level, it is beyond everything that was old in the past. You are creating a new etheric level of consciousness and you just keep going even further. Now the leaves of the trees are holding your new consciousness. In the future, you will not need anything to hold this consciousness because it will exist by itself through its own energy. Currently, you are still in between the leaves on the trees, which are holding your new energy, your new consciousness. You are growing even higher, having your consciousness be a quantum field without any means of material support. Look what you have done in less than 22 years. For 2,000 years, you were living mainly without any changes. In 22 years, you have covered a tremendous gap and totally moved into the new reality of living, being, and thinking. And then normally, Grandma never advertises anything on her messages, but she's doing it on this. She told me she wanted this done. It's the Melchizedek Vortex Pendant. It will spiral you into your new reality. Of course, you can go on her website and read all about it. Namaste, Grandma. Thank you, Grandma. Thank you. Thank you, Grandma Chandra. And thank you for being here. Kat, we are going to move into Pollyanna. Unless Grandma has anything else she'd like to say at this time. I have just upgraded the vibrational rate of every person that has joined this call, even those who cannot be present right now. You are a new spearhead, a new thrust, and you are going forward to help with the planetary consciousness. Woohoo! Celebrate, celebrate, celebrate! Okay! <laughs> You can. Thank you, Jean. Thank you. All right. Um, next on our show for today is Pollyanna Bush. Pollyanna is a master vocal coach, an award winning singer, songwriter, music educator, and spiritual leader based in the San Francisco Bay Area. She has supported and shaped artistic paths of many musicians, creators, and community figures for over 35 years. Pollyanna's mission is to encourage and inspire people to use the sacred act of singing and making music as an expression of love, emotional healing, and transformation. She finds personal joy in leading others to experience that vocal freedom, celebrate their diversity, and enjoy a pure connection to themselves through the sacred art of music. She most recently earned a three-year teaching certificate from the Complete Vocal Institution in Copenhagen, making her one of only three authorized musical and vocal coaches in all of North America from that distinguished academy. Pollyanna, welcome to Conversations with Love. It's so wonderful to be here. Thank you, Lee. It's a, it's a total pleasure and honor to be here. And I am so in love with this energy this conversation of transformation and i felt like that was a perfect lead-in grandmother into uh, the message that i am here to share today which has to do with what we are doing and that and that we are powerful and that we are creators and that we are connected to that quantum field and part of it and and we're changing we're shape shifting you know we're shape shifting our lives we're creating who we are what we want to be what we came here to do so that's what i the song that i want to share with you today is really about that thank you pollyanna looking forward beautiful so this song is called walk into your future uh, which is inspired by dr joe dispenza's work and um what I would really love for all of us to do right now 
as a way to participate in this song is to uh, get very present just very very present right now and let's just take some deep breaths like right into our heart center inhale you can even put your hands on your heart if that feels good so inhale yeah through the breath we can contact everything we need inhale and feel your heart expand Feel your love for yourself. And then let that love expand outward to your loved ones, your family, your friends, your communities, to this world, to this universe, to universes, right? <laughs> so what I would love for you to do in this um, song is um, that you get to participate by creating the world that you are envisioning, right? What is the world that you want to experience? Right now, get very, very clear about what that is. You can even say it out loud to yourself, whatever it is. And I want you to just stay in that. The invitation is to stay in that focus as I share this song. And feel free to sing along or sound along. Let your voice move because your voice is powerful. Our voices are powerful. If you say your intention out loud, believe me, it, it is moving the energy around you and you are creating, you are a creative force yourself. So here we go. Breathe, create, say it out loud. What is it that you are creating right now? My dear one, we open your eyes, look out upon the world and see a new sunrise. Those thoughts pounding in your head, just a broken recording, time to think new thoughts instead. And the sound that you hear. from your past cross the river with me to a new destiny walk into your future your beautiful creation walk into your future Beautiful dream. 
What a beautiful song. And she has put that uh, recording, YouTube recording, in the chat for us. So it's there if you want to save it and hear this song again. And Pollyanna has an amazing website and fabulous <laughs> classes. The Empowered Singer, one of them. Because I'm telling you, when you belt it out, you belt it out. <laughs> That's wonderful. Thank you so much. So, I'm so glad you're here, and those of you who want to talk I'm with all of our guests today, you'll be able to talk. We have two more people to present, and then uh, we will have a Q&A. Thank you, Pollyanna. That was so beautiful. I just wanted to say my website is down for the moment. Don't know why, but we'll get it back up. <laughs> Got it. Got it. Okay, so we'll see you in a bit. Our next guest is... Steve Behrman, internationally known author, at least 12 books, and one of them is with the biology of belief researcher, Dr. Bruce H. Lipton, uh, Evolution. He is a humorist and a workshop leader. Uh, for the past 33 years, he has written and performed as Swami Beyond Ananda, the cosmic comic. Swami's comedy has been called irreverently uplifting and has been described both as comedy disguised as wisdom and wisdom disguised as comedy. <laughs> Swami Beyond Ananda is the cosmic comic alter ego of the writer, humorist, performer and uncommentator Steve Behrman. The Swami, whose favorite yoga pose is tongue-in-cheek, is the spokesperson for a new non-religion, fun, Dementalism, accent on fun. Says the Swami, we are strictly non-dominational. And in these unprecedented times, what we really need to do is set a new precedent and a new president will follow. Because if we only do what we've always done, we'll only get what we've always gotten. So here are some new precedents to vote for. Government of the people, by the people, for the people. A government that does our bidding, not the bidding of the highest bidder. Religions practicing the golden rule instead of saying, we are going to heaven and you can go to hell. Renewable, non-polluting energy, so abundant we won't need armies to defend it. And people of the world laughing together instead of crying separately. And so Swami and Steve will present their presidential platform which can be adopted by any candidate, any party, any organization, and any individual. Let's select ourselves to put spiritual practice into practice, to improve reality, and to become the sovereign citizens our founding fathers intended. And let's have a party doing it. The right to laugh party. Steve is active in transpartisan politics and the practical application of spontaneous evolution Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Steve Berman, Swami Beyond Ananda. 
Oh, well, wow, what an introduction. I hardly recognize myself. But first of all, I would love to acknowledge what Pollyanna did, because again, if we only do what we've always done, we will only get what we've always gotten. So I have said, if you don't like the current programming, turn off your TV and tell a vision instead. So thank you for telling your vision and helping the rest of us tell our vision. Now, here we are. It's 9-11. And this is the great opportunity for us to shift. And by the way, shift happens. This is our opportunity to shift from the fear-based state of emergency to a love-based state of emerge and see. Emerge from the illusion of separation and see that we are all connected. Because peace is not just an absence of conflict. Peace is the presence of love in action in our hearts from the inside out. Now, since the, the piece that you just read, since the Right to Laugh Party and Swami for President and all of those things, I have a new mission. It's called the Great Upwising, right? It's a four-step program, guaranteed mathematically to work three times faster than 12-step. Hmm? And it's a simple four-step program. Wake up, wise up, grow up, show up. Wake up from the illusion of separation and see how we have been divided and conquered so that we have not been able to unify around the coherent power of love. Step two, wise up to that coherent power of love, the love that is in us and the love that we can spread through all of our words, our works, and such, our being on the planet. Number three, grow up. Grow up from children of God to adults of good, where we are actually responsibly manifesting the world that we desire in our daily lives. And finally, show up on a new playing field, ready to play a new game, thrival for each and all. And that is the four-step program. Now, what's great about this program is that anybody can practice it in any way that they want. And what happens is that we recognize that it is a piecemeal approach to peace. A little piece here, a little piece there, and pretty soon we have one big peace everywhere. How do we know when world peace is at hand? World peace is at hand when all of the peace groups get along with each other. That is, a, that is the first beginning start to let us know. Because again, if we want outer peace, we have to take all of the inner peace we've been cultivating and let it out, declaring all out peace. Now, I have a dream. I have a dream. In my dream, now we can't, we can't really eliminate conflict in the world, but we can change the rules of engagement. In my dream, in the future, all wars will be fought with cream pies. Hmm? Only cream pies is the only weapon you can use, and then you have to lick the pie off of the face of your opponent. Imagine everybody coming back from the conflict, smiling and nourished and healthy, saying, we licked them good, didn't we? Yes, if only they had this 20 years ago, before the, uh, the 30 years ago now, we would have Operation Desert Storm, where we bring sweetness to the people that we want to be, that we've been taught to be in conflict with. Yes. Now, right now, of course, the great place, people have asked me all the time, Swami, will there ever be peace in the Middle East? Hmm? I say, well, first of all, let us create peace in the Middle West first, because we have a deeply divided body politic in this country. Hmm? Half the population believes the system is broken. The other half believe it's fixed. We have, we have been divided into these two political tribes, the red tribe Republicans, blue tribe Democrats, spending all of their energy arguing about whether it is worse to kill the born or the unborn. Meanwhile, the Commonwealth, and this goes for the whole world, the Commonwealth has been stolen by a very, very, very small percentage of the uncommonly wealthy, and the bill has been sent to the not yet born. Hmm? So my new program, which I'm calling the Great Uprising, as I said, is to bring left and right, front and center, to face the music and dance together, to turn the funk into function, and leave the junk at the junction. We have to follow the Native Americans. They sit in sacred circle, don't they? They keep talking and talking until there's nothing left but the obvious truth. 
So we need to bring red tribe and blue tribe together in sacred circle to talk until they are purple in the face. Because only by facing things together as one purple people will the peeps outnumber the perps. Hmm? Now people ask me all the time, will we be able to accomplish this? Will we be able to do it? I have to refer to the great philosopher and center fielder, Willie Mays. Willie Mays, uh, many years ago, was being interviewed by the sportscaster Howard Cosell. And I will channel this interview for you right now. <laughs> We're talking with Willie Mays. Willie, let me ask you this. Will the Giants win the pennant this year, Willie Mays? And Willie May said, I don't know, Howard. That's what we're going to play the season to find out. Hmm? So this is an evolution, an evolutionary upwising where each of us is asked to participate and bring whatever gifts we have to the table. So we each of us have been given a special gift just for entering. Each of us totally unique, just like everybody else. So I will sign off for now. Now, namaste. And now I must go. Goodbye. Thank you, Swami. That was wonderful. Yes. Wake up laughing and wise up loving. That's the Swami's precedent. So that's what we are doing today. Thank you. Thank you. And we will see you again momentarily. Um, but our next guest is Kat Parenti. We would say, I would say she is the heroine of our day. Kat is going to present her Afghan her and Chandra, her daughter Chandra's Afghan Disabled and Widows Women's Work Project. Kat is a published author of many books. Her memoir, Afghanistan, a memoir from Brooklyn to Kabul, books one and two, was reviewed by Hillary Rodham Clinton, among other notable figures. Kat grew up in Brooklyn and lived in Afghanistan on and off for 20 years. She is also a humanitarian, an activist, and an international speaker. October 1st this year, she and her daughter Chandra Ahmed Khan and their Afghan family members are launching the Afghan Disabled and Widowed Women, sorry, uh, on October 1st, Kat Parenti and her daughter Chandra Ahmed Khan and their Afghan family members are launching the Afghan Disabled and Widowed Women's Project in Afghanistan. She welcomes your support of this vital project. Kat, welcome to Conversations with Love. Tell us about your inspiring project. Well, Lee said most of it, so I don't have to reiterate, but I would like to talk about my shirt for one minute. Okay, let me read. We have a tremendous electrical storm going on here, so I don't know if we're going to be off or on or what, but I'm going to go ahead. Okay, folks, you see this? It's the rose with a long stem, okay? Now, this is the symbol of Sufism. And the Afghans, of course, the four major orders of Sufism were founded in Afghanistan many years ago. The rose is the symbol. Why the rose? Because they say that the stem of the rose is the path to God or Allah. And in my mind, there's only one God. I don't care what you call it. Then the thorns are the obstacles in life that you have to overcome. And the blossom is the final unification with the creator. So this is the consciousness of these people. I know you've all seen the news, et cetera, et cetera, and the Taliban, which we don't have to have a discussion about, and who did what, where, when. The point is, right now, the women are being shut away, if you will, marginalized, if you will. Let me bring something clear, though. There are two groups of Taliban. One group is the younger group, age-wise, and the other one is the older group. The younger group, those are the ones who promised when they came in, they were going to have the women go to school, the women work, dot, dot, D, on and on. Never happened. Why? Because the leaders or the elders in that group said, no way, Jose. So what we have are widows. Now, this is a special category, folks. It's not like here we are in the West. 
okay, your husband dies, your wife dies, whatever, and you get the house, the car, the bank account, on and on and on. No, it's not like that there. It used to be when the culture was intact before the coming of the Soviets and their occupation, before that, it was the brother's responsibility that if the sister's husband dies, he would take her into his family and care for her. But because of the 40 years of war, the Soviets, the civil wars with the Mujahideen, and then the United States, then the Taliban, because of all this, folks, there are so many dead men that there's no longer a system where, okay, I can go to my brother's house. So these women are literally on the streets with their children. If they get a crust of bread, they're happy. Let me go back to the Taliban. The good news about the Taliban, whether they're the lower or the higher, I don't care. They have absolutely no objection to women working inside their homes. Now, what have these women been doing for the last thousands of years? Hand embroidery. Gorgeous, beautiful hand embroidery. So, what I aim to do... Okay, the electrical storm has maybe taken over. So what Kat is aiming to do, and I'm going to share a screen of the PowerPoint that she created until she comes back, and it, she should come back momentarily. But this is the um, PowerPoint that she created, and um, this is just a sample of the embroidery. Um, it is a lifeline for the, these women and their families. Um, she, it is in the relative safety of their home. They make, uh, without, they have no electricity or running water and they have zero opportunities outside their residences because they are considered immoral. They are banned from everything, travel, shopping, walking in the streets, working, uh, living. And so Katz, Parenti and her daughter Chandra's Afghan Disabled and Widowed Women's Project is a viable means of support that can create a sense of belonging. Um, we have a donation link set up. Many of you have already donated. And um, within uh, the first month, there will be um, embroidery pieces to purchase. Um, some of these women have created their own city called Zanaban, or City of Women, by picking up discarded garbage, sticks, rocks, clothing, and creating hovels. And, and due to the access denied to any legitimate means, the only source of income they might have is prostitution. Um, and uh, Kat told me a story when we were creating this about how she traveled the Kush Mountains uh, during the Soviet invasion and they were she was delivering 40 years ago to widows in desperation in these refugee camps. Millions and millions and millions of Afghan people have been um, displaced and are refugees in Pakistan, in Iran and both of these countries are in dire straits. And this is another sample of this beautiful traditional embroidery. There's another sample. It looks like we have lost her because of the uh, storm, but I'm just going to um, open it up for questions. Um, any questions that I can answer for Kat, I will. And I just bring back our... Um, other guests and hopefully she'll be able to come back before the show is over. Uh, it's, it's really remarkable um, how one can work inside of a system like that and create benefit in spite of all of the bad stuff going on. This is a wonderfully enlightening project. I'll, hap I'll be happy to share this with my list as well when the show is over. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. I mean, the, the resilience and, and creativity, um, you know, that that love and, and, and power and um, those things shine through, 
regardless of circumstances. And that's, I mean, this is just, you know, evidence of that. So um, they're heroines, heroes, and, and shining glory. So definitely I want to share their message, their what's happening in the work in the world. It, it's it's really beautiful what she's what she said i mean this woman is an amazing businesswoman she uh traveled back and forth i mean her books uh, i highly recommend you read them because you will learn about this magical culture of afghanistan and the sufi uh the sufi order if you will which is um also being ostracized the group that she's working with are doubly in trouble. Um, I, um, Lee, can I talk? Yay, she's back. Oh, there she is. She's back. Uh, <laughs> yay. yay, yay, yay. <laughs> I know you sent me all your good energy and the whole thing went back again. <laughs> okay, so yeah, everything Lee said is correct. I made a study when I was living there for such a long period of time, of course. Chandra's father was from Afghanistan. He's deceased. And he was a Sufi master. I learned a lot from him. I wrote five books on Afghanistan. The last two, as Lee's holding up, are they, they are Amazon.com bestsellers, and you can order them from Amazon. The point being that what I wish to do is to help these people, the women particularly, who have been so shoved aside in this culture to bring them out again in within the confines and the restrictions that they have, but to enable them to support themselves and their families. And this is what I aim to do. And what was it? What did you say, Pollyanna? You said, um, what was your wish? What was your dream? Something like that when you were talking to bring it out to join you in that. And what I said was, I want every single woman in Afghanistan, no matter what tribe connection, to be self-empowered and to be able to take care of themselves and their families. My daughter and I have never worked for anyone. We've always had our own businesses. And this is what I am promoting for these women to have their own businesses. I could sit here and tell you horror stories of the yin yang, but that is not the purpose of what I want to do here. You have enough of that. Um, just something funny. Uh, Lee and I, when we have the laugh, we bring this up. Okay, so we asked one of our families, she had a shop in Kabul, Afghanistan, which of course is doing nothing now because she's not allowed to be outdoors. Her husband has taken over the face of the business. Good, wonderful. However, we said, show us pictures of what you've got there because if you have stuff that's already prepared, let alone having the women do the embroidery, maybe we could start and sell that stuff and that'll give us a cushion to give you money to help these women to buy the threads, the cloth, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, because what they're gonna be doing the women is very small pieces of embroidery. We're not doing clothing. We're not getting there because that's a very limited market in the Western world. So what we're doing is very small pieces, <laughs> very small pieces of embroidery. Okay, so <laughs> Lee brought this picture up. This is one of the pictures they sent us of what they have in the shop. Lee and I go, oh my God. This is beautiful. Look at that embroidery. Oh my God. Oh, we should get this and we should sell this. And to us, you know, Western eyes, they look like shawls. They could be used as shawls. <laughs> I get with the Afghan family and I say, oh my God, we love these shawls. You know, we want to get them and da da da. <laughs> and they write back. <laughs> they say, these are not shawls. These are the pantaloons of the women that they wear under their dresses. <laughs> so basically, we'll be selling underwear. <laughs> so whenever Lee and I need to laugh, we bring up that image again. But seriously, 
the small pieces of embroidery, I want the women to do like a three by five index card. I want them to do small pieces because these are being sold as part of the Afghan culture. This is the culture of these people. This is what they do. This is what you put on your wall to show that you're supporting them. Or you can put them on a piece of clothing of your own if you so wish. But this is the crux of it, to get these women productive. And believe me, any one of you that's listening or present, if you have any ideas or you want to help in any way, do anything, anytime, anywhere, just contact me, um, cat.parenti at gmail.com. Or if you forget that, just grandmachandra at gmail.com. Thank you, Lee. Thank you, everybody. Love you guys. All love and blessings to all of you. Steve, you. I love the four steps. I'm putting that into consciousness immediately. <laughs> I have to say to Kat that I too spent my deformative years in Brooklyn as well. <laughs> I went I went to Wingate High School. What high school did you go to? Oh, no, honey, no. I went to a private Catholic girls' school. I'm Italian. Font Bon Hall. <laughs> what was it called? You've never heard of But I graduated from Fordham University. I'm sure you've There's another Catholic school, of course. Another, yes. of course. <laughs> another <else>? Catholic school. <laughs> and then I threw it in the garbage, and I went out into the world and saw what other people are believing and thinking and said. So you're from Bay Ridge, huh? Are you yeah. from Bay Ridge? Saturday Night Fever. Where are you from? Well, Bedford Stuyvesant, basically, Bedford? in the project, grew up in the projects. <laughs> but then we moved to Bensonhurst, where the Jewish and Italian yeah. food was a lot better. So. Yeah, that's right. In the well, shadow no. of, way, of of Welcome Back, Cotter. I grew up in the shadow of Welcome Back, Cotter. <laughs> Bay Parkway and, uh, and Benson Avenue. This is like 99th Street and Shore Road, where we grew up. Ah, of course, of course. See, when you say your ethnicity, I know where you're from. That is of course you do. Well, I yeah. knew where you were from before you opened your mouth, but now I really know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and, and what glorious work you're doing. I really, I'm, I'm blown away by this mission. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Steve. And I love the four steps. You want to send them to me? Because I want to put them yeah. on the wall, okay? Good. Yeah, okay. excellent. Thanks. Actually, why don't you repeat them? I'm going to put them in the chat. Oh, good, good, okay. yes. Yeah, four-step program. Wake up, wise up, grow up, show up. Show up. Wake up to the illusion of separation, wise up to the power of love, grow up from children of God to adults of good, and show up on a new playing field, ready to play a new game, thrival, better yeah. than survival for yeah. each and all. Yeah, yeah. Brilliant, beautiful. 9-11 yeah. yeah. is the Jewish New Year known as, I'm sorry, the Jewish, the Ethiopian. Uh, I went a little ahead of myself there. The <laughs> Ethiopian. You're, you're five, four days ahead, yeah. <laughs> the Ethiopian uh, New Year is, is today. It's celebrated on 9-11 and 9-12 during a leap year. And so this flower represents the new growth, the spring of newness. And obviously, it's not far from the Jewish New Year of Rosh Hashanah, which is coming up in a few days after the new moon. Um, I am just so grateful to all of you for what you bring to life. Um, We're grateful for you. Lee, you know, you know what the the service that you provide, um, the forum that you provide, and your heart is just beautiful, so powerful, and so needed. You know that you that you continuing these conversations of love. That's it. That's that's what we. That's our power. That's that's what makes this world go around and um, just applaud. Yay! <laughs> Yay, Lee! <laughs> okay, so we have a hand raised. Diane, please come on. Oh, thank you. It's my first time. I was just trying to applaud you. I didn't. wasn't trying to <laughs> raise my well, hand. One but... hand. 
Well, there's the sound of one hand <laughs> plotting. That's right. Yeah. I don't know how to use the system, but it's so nice to, uh, you know, be a part of this and hear about the Afghan women. When, when you send that, um, if I was going to share it, I would just share the Gmail thing, or is there another link to share? If, well, if I want to share something for the Afghan woman, would it just be cat.parente at Gmail, or is there a link, another link to share? Well, we've set up a donation link until the end of September, because the launch is October 1st for this project. And um, basically, the, the, the idea is, Kat, correct me if I'm wrong, that we're, we're going to send money to get them started so they can buy supplies. There's already a group of 18 women who are ready to go. They're already sewing. So we'd get these group of 18 women started. And in about three to, it takes them about three to four weeks to make just one piece of three by five embroidery. And all of their embroidery is based on nature themes. Like, I know I went through it very quickly, but you see the ram's horn because of the sheep herding. And you see, you see the spiral of the Fibonacci sequence of the flowers. And, and it's just, um, so we have a donation link set up that's going to be live until the 30th of September. So then the, the, the money that we, that we raise is going to go directly to these women to get started. And then in about three to five weeks, we should, well, and then however long it takes for DHL to ship it, we should be getting the first group of embroidery um, handiwork, but we're going to pay them in advance to, to get started, and then each month we'll be generating as many pieces, and we'll just, a cat will have a website set up um, on her website, catparenti.com slash all things afghan where you can actually purchase directly and or donate but we are we are not there yet we've just you know we've just barely begun so diane after the show when um when the show's over i'll i'll say i'll resend the donation link and you can share that to start oh, and great. then and then always you know you can email cat cat dot parenti and i'll put that in the chat again cat.parenti at gmail.com and, and then Lee, Lee could you also send a picture uh with the link maybe a close-up of some of that beautiful work because I'd love to put a picture with the link when I share it great we'll to do get the visual you know with whatever I say okay 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 Lee you know what we should send them some of the pieces that the women have sent us that we requested samples to be made in a certain way. Let's you and I discuss that. And yes, that's a brilliant idea, Diane. Thank you so much. But Lee, we want to maybe send not the not the underwear, but the actual pieces that these people are going to be making. Okay, yeah. because that's what we want to sell ultimately. Yes, yeah, yes, well, yes. Anything, because even just a close up on some of the the work, you know, like the yes, yes. and the yes. ram, because it yes. it's so beautiful, just instantaneously it's gonna connect with people when they see it. So any anything that would be fantastic. Okay. Right. So, okay. Lee and I'll do that. And and we know that love is the greatest force yes. of all. Yes. Because you know in the in the olden days, we used to say God is love, and and we are all waking up as, as adults of good, responsible to behave as. So, Lee, you're going to be sending that out to everybody in, in this community, yeah? Yes, yes, and I will also put it on the Facebook Live, so anyone who chooses can, uh, can access the link. And I love that idea, Dan. Thank you. What I'll do is I'll, I'll kind of modify the link, not for the show, but it'll be absolutely just for donations for CATS um, project, Afghan Disabled and Widowed Women's Work Project. Am I, am I on your list for that? You are. Everybody's on the list who's, who signed up for the show. And also there are many people have donated so generously already. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, she'll probably reach the $1,200 goal uh, if everybody just keeps donating what they can uh, before the 30th so that we can get this money into 
uh, Afghanistan safely. And again, this is, uh, you know, this is, we're just beginning, but think about this. This show was created to have conversations with love about what people are already doing. There is more love in this world than anything else. Everything is love. Look at it. Look at life. Look at nature. Look at the, the smiles on the children, the people that you love. Can I Go just cat. add something? Yes. Um, for those who, do, again, this is going to be after the donation, I'm going to call it a box, is closed, which is the 30th of September. So by that time, anyone who has donated will receive a download, and it's called The Five Myths of Afghan Culture. This is something, of course, that I've written. So at least people get a glimpse of who these people truly are and not just the Taliban and the war and the Soviets and the Americans, but who are they in their souls? And I'll tell you, if, do I have time to tell a quick, beautiful story or are we done, Lee? Go ahead. Okay. So there are two women, they're sisters, they get married. One sister has five kids. The other sister can't conceive. Now, according to their culture, the sister who has the five kids gives one of her sons to the other sister to raise as her own. So that sister and her husband will have someone to care for them in their old age. Goes one step farther. The sister who receives the son, she changes her name to Mariam, which is Mary. And she names her son Isa, which is Jesus. Wow. I, I know the depths of our lives we have yet to even explore. And it's time, it's time, it's time. So wake up laughing. Yes. And rise up loving and yes. let's do this make this you know actually change the nightmare that we've been living yes. into the true dream of humanity as we were intended yes yes thank you lee thank you everybody thank you everybody mm. lee. yeah thank you for broadcasting this and sharing it and uh, magnifying the love One good thing about music, when it hits, you feel no pain. So hit us with music. <laughs> so, um, and I wanted to let you know, my website is now up in case anybody wants to check it out. Great, yeah. great, great. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you to everyone who came live. Oh, my goodness, for bringing your energy, for bringing your presence. Emma, thank you for helping me with the uh, <laughs> tech, tech, tech. Uh, I'm so grateful to Kat, to Grandma Chandra. Um, maybe Chan, can you, Grandma Chandra, can you take us out with a, with a just a, a moment of silence on this 9/11? Yes.
Love.